So there's suddenly a 54% chance that the target range of the rate heights by the Fed will be 5.25% to 5.5%. Originally, it was supposed to be 4.5% to 4.75%. Uh, so this is a very large shift compared to the original consensus. And I believe that this will start to weigh on the market beginning this week, especially just because a lot of the economic data we've been receiving lately has not looked the best for what the Fed's trying to do right now. Uh, again, inflation not looking like it's falling down as much as it should. The jobs market is a whole other issue as well. So a lot of these macro things are not working in favor of the Fed, at least what they've been doing so far, uh, which could prompt future rate hikes, which if this is to be the case, will weigh on the market much like it did uh, throughout 2022, especially if this is something that will be ongoing uh, like past March, because originally what's been priced into the market is uh, 25 basis points up until March. And then after that, there being a pause with potential rate rate cuts later in the year. Uh, that's the current consensus, or at least was the current consensus before this past week uh, after receiving some more economic data. So uh, some interesting shifts to the overall macro uh, portion of the market, at least what traders are predicting. And personally, that just means that there's more bearish emphasis for the future. There doesn't have to be uh, extra additional rate hikes beyond March, at least for my thesis of more bearish emphasis uh, playing out here, especially within the next couple months. But it just ends up being more fueled to the the fire. And we will see what happens here in this week, especially with that starting to become priced into the market. As you can see here, I have referenced this before. We have two ascending wedges. Uh, the first one over here, we had a breakdown from, and then we saw accumulation over here, which prompted a pretty substantial short squeeze rally uh, that has brought us above this trend line that started at all time highs over here, the yellow one. And I've referenced both of these a lot, or both of these patterns a lot. Uh, what's interesting is we still are below this ascending wedge that we had from back here. It is much smaller than the one from over here that started on October 13th, this big pickup day on that CPI day uh, that had a major bullish move to the upside. Uh, but still, we are below this level. And despite the fact that we had a bullish candle pickup on OPEX day on Friday, we still ended the day red, which if you remember from the last video, I talked about the 18 day reversal cycle that I use. So I have a lot of these cycles that I personally use. This is one of the basic forms of them. So I decided to share it on the channel. I don't like to share many of my reversal dates, uh, at least publicly, but just because if too many people know about it, then they will literally stop working. And I've seen that happen in the past uh, to other people as well as myself with some methods that I use, uh, just because then people can hedge accordingly. If there's too many people that are aware a variable playing out, uh, then it just won't end up playing out. But I decided to share this one with you guys. It has played out fairly well so far, uh, just like it has throughout the past year. As you can see here, we've had a two-day reversal thus far. The minimum requirement for this uh, reversal cycle has been at least three days, bare minimum. Uh, so, so far, we've only had two, which means that there is a potential for continuation downward to start off this week, uh, just for that minimum requirement to be met. Uh, but as you can see here, we had a momentum upwards going into this day of February 15th, which was the 18 day cycle. And then following that, we had a very bearish candle that brought us back into this channel, the two purple lines here. And then we also had another red day, technically on Friday, despite the green candle, you can see we closed negative 0.25% on Friday here. So, so far we've had two down days since this reversal day from up here, and it's prompted a nice sell off so far. So this one has worked out very well. And I personally believe this one will see continuation throughout this week. Uh, it is essential that lows are broken from Friday, or at least those low levels. So it is essential for these lows to get broken if we do want to see some more extended downside, because uh, this ended up being a fairly strong support. And you can see here, it was very difficult for price to get under 404. Uh, kind of consolidated down here on OPEX day, but then had a nice rally to finish off the day. So still ended up being a red day overall since the gap was not filled the same day. Uh, but as of now, we still are amidst this channel, in the middle of this channel. Uh, and it, so far, it also, we saw a fake breakout earlier in the week from up here. So typically you see a drawdown to retest the lower end of the trend line when you have a fake breakout and it falls back into the channel. So my expectation is we will see at the very least a retest of this lower end of the trend line during this week, but we will see uh, bulls definitely want to gap it back up above this channel. That can prompt some more bullish price action if they're able to do that uh, to start off tomorrow. But I'm going to continue to watch and see kind of where we open on Tuesday to get a sense on bias. Because if we remain in the channel, then there's more downside potential to the lower end of this trend line. Additionally, if you look over here on Cheddarflow, you can see we actually saw some more puts hit the tape from last week. Just from Friday alone, we saw 1.7 million for this 386 strike. So these are starting to get more aggressive to the out the money bets. We've seen a lot of these 400-ish uh, 
strike to 405, 410 strikes. So that's not as aggressive. They still are out the money from this past week. Uh, but these 386, 395, these are a lot more aggressive to out the money orders. Uh, 421 expiration and 721 expiration. So still, they're adding a little bit more time on these in terms of expiration. When characteristically from this past month, a lot of the calls that we've been seeing by whales have been very short dated. We saw a lot of 217s from this past month. And the extent of bullishness has just went up to like the March uh, expiration. It hasn't really gone past there. Past there has been a lot more bearish emphasis like we've seen with these 421 and now 721 expirations. And if you scroll down, you see a pretty consistent trend with these bearish orders. We saw 1.7 million. Uh, this was for an in the money order for the 410 strike. We've seen a lot of the 410 for the 421 expirations. And one that was very interesting to me was this 1.6 million in premium for the 360 strike. This is a very rare order. And on top of that, it was for the 317 expiration. So only a month out, a pretty aggressive bet here, possible hedge uh, for sure, but still very rare to see a print like this. We haven't seen prints like this in quite a while uh, as of now. So definitely watching this order to see what happens. They're going to need a move to happen literally this week in order for this to actually be a directional bet that plays in their favor. Uh, so I will continue to watch this order uh, throughout this week and see how it fares. Also, we saw a decent amount of dark pool activity on Friday. No surprise since typically OPEX days, we see more premium hitting the tape. Uh, we saw 1.3 billion in terms of signature dark pool prints. Nothing too crazy. This is at the 408.34 level. So we did end up closing uh, just a bit below that. And if you scroll down here, you can see just a lot of these prints. Again, it is OPEX day. So this is kind of characteristic uh, each month to see something like this. We saw 759 just out of two orders at the 406.10 level. Um, so again, nothing too crazy overall for an OPEX day. We've seen a lot more on OPEXs, but still important to note the 1.3 billion premium at the 408.34 level. And if you look back throughout the week, if you look back at Thursday, you can see not too much premium overall. This was characteristic through the entire week, just 421, uh, 421 million that is for five signature dark pole prints. Uh, going back here to Wednesday, fairly light, same exact thing. 1.8 billion. This was a little bit more than we've seen in terms of just the 100 millions, but still nothing crazy like we saw from the past week uh, for over 3 billion in premium. This is just kind of consistent with what we've been seeing so far. So it may be a little bit more eye opening if we saw a lot of these 1.8 billion like day after day after day. But the fact that this is just by itself uh, in the middle of the week on Wednesday, and if you look back at Tuesday, you could see uh, literally just 936 million. So it's around a lot of days that are only in the 100 millions. Nothing too eye opening that is uh, just on this. But over Overall, it's still continuing to monitor dark pool activity because it can give us insights on potential distribution, just like we saw from that past week. If you look back to over here, the 41520 and 41670 levels, we saw about three billion in premium on each of these. And so far, it's acted as a pretty hefty distribution level. We have yet to get past this level or this range so far. And um, we've sold off since then, so these did end up being sells. And it's important if you are bold that we do end up getting back above this uh, if you do want to see continuation, because otherwise these are very hard sells uh, that are going to be difficult to get back above and they're just acting as a solid resistance. And last note here for this video, we did see a pretty decent size bounce for the VIX off this demand range. Two interesting things here. Yes, it can be difficult to chart the VIX. Uh, so do take it with a grain of salt. It's not the same as an individual ticker. However, something important to note here is we do have a potential inverse head and shoulders here. We have the left shoulder right here, the head and then the right shoulder. And so far we've seen a positive reaction to the right shoulder forming. Not only has it had a bounce from the right shoulder, also had to bounce from the retest of this demand range of the white box that you're seeing here. And every time we have touched this demand range, it has prompted a bounce to 30 plus at the very least, typically around 33 to 37 each time uh, that is kind of wicked out. So, so far we're seeing a bullish reaction to this demand range. And overall, just the weekly candle was a weekly pickup candle, as you can see here, bullish candle from this past week. And then over here, I did end up retesting the demand range and then bounced off of that. So I am looking for continuation off of this setup because it is a fairly bullish setup for at least minor continuation upward. Other than that though, do make sure to watch for the break of 404 this week. If this is the case, which is my expectation, uh, we will see 400 very soon after just because this is a very strong support. And if this is cracked, by the way, it also was the start of this FOMC rally that we did see from this past week. So if this does break, that means that we had a full retracement of this FOMC rally, which means that all of this up here was a form of distribution and thus a fake breakout from the previous channel that we were in. So if we do see a break below this 404 level, uh, do watch out because 400 would be en route fairly soon after that. Uh, but again, continue to monitor this channel that we're in right now uh, and best of luck trading this week.